How's it going, Jack Tackers, and welcome back to another video for you guys. Today, I'm going to be doing my review for Barry, Season 4, Episode 4, which was titled, It Takes a Psycho. Oh my golly. I mean, this episode was fantastic. I don't even know where to start. Um, spoilers, obviously. All my reviews are spoiler-filled. But uh, there's so many things to talk about in this episode, and so many things happen. And, it, and all I'll just say is... This was one of the best episodes in the entire series, without a doubt my favorite of the show so far this season. Um, and it was just such an intense episode. What an episode. Uh, which is crazy because Barry, the main character of the series, was hardly in it. Not until the very end. Um, I mean, he was like the shark from Jaws this episode. Kind of a looming presence, not really knowing when he's going to show up was very uh, intriguing and kept you on the edge of your seat. But there was already so many intense moments throughout the episode that, I mean, I'm still shook up about it, and it's a few hours later after I've seen it, and I'm just stunned. I loved this episode. It was incredible and uh, very heartbreaking as well, but we'll get, a, get to that uh, later in this review. But uh, it was just um, crazy. Anyway, we see Fuchs getting beat up in prison, uh, by the guards, uh, they think that uh, he knew where Barry was going and had something to do with this assassination attempt. But it's just so annoying because Fuchs kind of warned everyone that uh, obviously something was going down with Barry before. But I guess they're still kind of sussed about him um, and they're questioning him, wanting him to uh, reveal some information to them. But he doesn't have any information because Fuchs had nothing to do with it, obviously. And I'm actually feeling bad for Fuchs's character in this season, especially in this episode in particular, especially when he was beaten up and he was walking into the cafeteria and uh, everyone was just silent. And then he sits down and uh, is eating his food and he's just in so much pain. And you can see all the bruising on his face. It was super crazy and just like, man, I feel bad for Fuchs, honestly. And Fuchs last season, I kind of hated him. We were kind of meant to hate him last season because Barry didn't like him. Uh, at the time, and obviously in the season two finale, he was rampaging at him. And but now I, I do feel bad for Fuchs a little bit. It's a complex character. I mean, he's not a he's not a saint, obviously. But yeah, I felt bad for him a little bit. Uh, also, in this episode, Gene goes to this uh, cabin in Big Bear, presumably the same cabin Janice was killed by uh, outside of. I think I don't know for sure, but I assume it was because also when Gene. Um, was talking to his son when he was getting dropped off at the cabin. He was like, you know I can't stay one night here alone. Is that because of what happened with Janice? I, I assume, but maybe not. Maybe it's just because Gene, I don't know, doesn't like that place. But I assume that's what it is, uh, the same cabin. And Gene's basically super paranoid that Barry's coming after him, obviously because he finds out that he escaped from prison. And um, yeah, we, we the, the scene where he accidentally shoots his own son when he comes back and with, with food, through the door, because you see the silhouette and you think it's Barry. Well, I didn't think it was once we actually saw the full silhouette because it didn't really look like him, uh, his silhouette. And I was like, oh, no, I don't know what's going to go down. I didn't know who it was at first, but then, yeah, it was Gene's son. I, I was stunned. I don't know if he actually killed him. Maybe he did, but when it cuts to him lying on the floor bleeding... And it almost looked like a shoulder shot. I think he shot him twice, though. He might still be alive. And I think he probably should be alive, because if he is dead, like, oh my gosh, dude. Like, that'd be super tragic. I hope his son's still alive. It seemed like he was still wiggling around on the ground, maybe. I'd have to rewatch this scene again. But I, I believe his son might still be alive. I'm not going to say he's 100% dead. There is a character that is 100% dead, though. Um... I guess we'll just talk about it now. But basically, in the last episode, we know that Tank was told by Batir to kill these uh, group of guys that he's with, with the sand business and all that. And he ends up doing this. He kind of throws like a going away party for them. And uh, he goes to this giant uh, tank with all the sand in it. Those, those, those are called something. I forget what they're called. Um, but yeah, that giant tank with all the sand. And... Uh, it, it kind of drains all the uh, sand out and ends up suffocating all of these people. And Cristobal almost dies in that scene, but, well, he actually ends up dying for real later in the episode because he's killed by uh, the Chechens. And, oh, okay, yeah, so basically Cristobal wasn't okay with where Hank was going. He wasn't okay with Hank killing all those people 
and was really upset that Hank's kind of becoming a psychopath. It takes a psychopath, the title of the episode. Um, and Hank's definitely becoming ruthless, man. He's a, he is a psychopath at this point. Um, but, I mean, I'm not going to justify his actions, really. I mean, yes, he did believe that if he didn't kill these people, him and Cristobal were going to be killed regardless. So he was like, I'm not going to let that happen. But then Cristobal ends up dying anyway because Cristobal's like, I'm leaving you, Hank. Heartbreaking stuff. Also, let me just say, Anthony Kerrigan, the actor who plays NoHo Hank, holy smokes. I mean, honestly, this is probably his best performance in the series. Uh, he's been great all throughout, obviously, but like in terms of like an emotional moment for his character, because he's usually kind of the comedic relief character, kind of. Um, there's more to him that meets the eye, of course, but he gives a very dramatic performance in this episode where he's kind of yelling at Cristobal, pleading for him to stay, and um, that moment was so intense, and I was I had a knot in my stomach that whole time watching it. And, uh, yeah, Cristobal's like, no, I'm leaving you. And it was very interesting how they did it because I didn't know... We didn't hear a gunshot or anything when the door was closed. But, yeah, all those Chechens were still there at the house. And uh, they knew they couldn't let Cristobal go. They kind of uh, expected Cristobal to kind of leave. So that's why they were all there. And, uh, no, they ended up killing him. I believe they shot him. but We didn't hear a gunshot, though. Maybe they had silencers. I assume that's what happened. Um, but, yeah, it was heartbreaking. And he opens the door and Cristobal's there on the ground. And it's like, oh... My God. Wow. I mean, it was uh, it was heartbreaking. I didn't want that to go down. I didn't know it was going to happen, but it did. And it was so sad. And without a doubt, the highlight of the episode. But in a sad way, you know what I mean? But there's still more to talk about. We have Sally's story going on. She's uh, working with Kristen, I believe her name is, still uh, working with this actress. And uh, the CODA director shows up in this episode. Um, I've never actually seen Coda, but I know it won Best Picture, I believe, like, last year, so that's kind of funny. And, uh, Sally, like, almost ends up taking Kristen's job as an actress, and she actually gets the opportunity in this episode to maybe restart her career and kind of, uh, get it back together, because we saw earlier in the season that she's, uh, her career kind of went down the toilet and isn't going to be having many opportunities and whatnot, but... It does seem like she does get an opportunity here. However, doesn't really matter because it's kind of revealed that she was harboring Barry all along. I mean, I think she was harboring him. It definitely... Yeah, no, she was harboring him for sure. Um, because when she gets to her apartment, she uh, is like, Barry? I think I don't know if she just said that because she just had a feeling he was there or what. Or like, I don't know what was going on. But I'm pretty certain that like he was there throughout the whole episode. And um, obviously when... Um, I think when, yeah, when Kristen tells Sally that uh, Barry escaped from prison in that one scene, Sally's just kind of like not that phased by it, really. So I believe Barry kind of went there immediately. And um, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's what happened. But basically she says to Barry, let's go. Um, Or we should go or something like that. Yeah, let's go. Um, uh, Presumably talking about witness protection it makes you believe that's the case because then this ending, this ending that comes out of freaking nowhere, there's a time jump maybe and Barry and Sally are in this house in the middle of the desert, which, I mean, there, okay, there is too much to talk about, dude. I don't know if this was real or not, but basically, let me just finish describing the scene. They have kids, I think, or a kid, and I think uh, Barry has is wearing glasses in that scene and, they, yeah, they have that house in the desert And then the episode ends, basically. But, okay, a lot to unpack here. Was this even real? Was the let's go that Sally says to Barry actually referring to witness protection and them going to this house? Um, And we knew that was Barry's plan to get Sally to go with him at the end of episode three, and that was kind of going to happen until the assassination attempt, obviously. But now I'm just like, is that actually a real time jump? Or was this similar to the things we've been seeing with Barry in the earlier episodes of the season where he's kind of hallucinating like his past in that desert because it looked like didn't it look like that desert we'd seen earlier this season i feel like it did kind of look like that like they were in the middle of freaking nowhere weren't they i don't know maybe i need to pay more attention to the scene but i'm pretty certain it just kind of looked like they were in the middle of nowhere in that desert so i don't know if that exactly was real or not it there's a lot of trickery going on the promo for next week (laughs) reveals absolutely nothing 
And that's to be expected. I mean, the promos never reveal anything for Barry the next week's episode, which is good. I'm not complaining. Just let me stress that. I don't want to get spoiled for anything. I don't want to know. I mean, the episodes are only 30 minutes, dude. You can't reveal that much. You got to be careful with what you reveal in promos and stuff. So I'm not really complaining that much, but I do think it's kind of funny. Next week doesn't reveal anything. It's just that desert landscape that presumably is where the Witness Protection Program is, or their house, um, of course. But a fantastic episode. I was so sad to see Cristobal go this episode. Hopefully... Gene's son's not actually dead. I really, really hope he's still alive, honestly. Um, but yeah, there is a there is a lot to uh, talk about for this next week. But uh, let me hear your thoughts on all this down in the comments below. I'm getting emails all of a sudden. Um, geez, Louise, I apologize. Okay, <laughs> we're going we're gonna to close that. Um, anyway, I'm just... Uh, I'm so shocked by this episode, to be honest. It was the best episode of the season so far, and I'm just jabbering on. But yeah, let me hear your thoughts on the episode down in the comments below. If you liked this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Letterboxd and Twitter down in the description, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.